far. And then we, we had a look at these kids, and then they probably just go to a Dutch school, they really like, you know, become part of the Dutch society. And then on Saturday they go to these uh, Chinese schools to learn something about it. And I think that's a much nicer solution than actually sticking in your own corner and say, uh, you can only hang out with these people, because then you become this segregated part. Yeah. And then I like this solution much more, that you kind of become part of that culture, but then still also preserve your own uh, Yeah, so did, did you actually become part of the community now? Like, um, I suppose in my own way. Um, I live in Amsterdam and I don't really know that many Chinese people, but here in Russia there are uh, more Chinese people. <laughs> There's a bigger community here. And, uh, and I, I like hanging out with people like that may because um, they have a very interesting view of life. Uh, mm -hmm. Which, yeah. no offense, but like my, my, my Dutch Dutch friends, they don't understand. Of course. Yeah. And so, but she does understand because she's also, she also grew up in like, two, two cultures. So yeah. it's really nice to be able to, uh, to connect with the person yeah. who knows what you're talking about. The yeah. problems that, you're, that you face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, definitely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's really important. Yeah, but I think for you it's the same, right? That uh, yeah, you know, here. Exactly. And of course, I have a lot of friends here, and in the meantime, Sue also has Dutch friends, but it'll, it will always be different because she's yeah. in a different country and a different culture. Yeah, and also it and depends on, like, it also even depends on the region. Mm -hmm. So I connect more with the Mediterranean people mm -hmm. than, like, most of the Dutch people. <laughs> because I find, like, the culture so different. The, the approach is so different. But I hear that from a lot of people, also yeah. expats. Yeah. That, uh, it's, that they find it hard to connect with Dutch people because yeah. I mean, they will talk to you, but, still, but very quickly they will start speaking Dutch again. And, and for some reason, it, it's hard to, to let you in. Or yeah, it's just, you know that they're sincerely nice mm -hmm. and kind, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but then <laughs> there are these boundaries that nobody is really, you know, Unwritten yeah, exactly. There, there, and there are a lot of them. So, like, you think like, okay, we I mean, might be friends, but I'm not quite sure if we're yeah. friends. But, but, like, different. yeah. And then if you ask them, you're never really the friend, you know. I have this. So we have this neighbor that I really hang out a lot of time, for instance. And uh, I noticed that every time she introduces me, she still calls me yeah, my buurvrouw. And then it's been like two years that we are. I consider as friends, well, and like a while ago, I actually said like, is that really what I am to you, like the buurvrouw? <laughs> you know, it's just, to me it's weird when you say it like that. Yes, it is a fact that we live, like, you know, but it's not the fact that I hang out with you because you're my neighbor, like, I don't hang out with all my neighbors. So like, she was like, no, you're my friend, of course, I was like, yeah, but, okay, <laughs> but you understand it, right? <laughs> and she was like, Oh yeah, I do understand what you mean now. <laughs> but just it, yeah, exactly. It sometimes needs a bit push, and like you know, to, to also show your own perspective to the story. I think that's the thing. Like if you are willing to take that step, then you can have more of a clear relationship because I think that that the cultural forms are very, you know, um, you have to be understanding each other both equally to ha actually communicate well. Yeah, but in that sense, I also think that uh, maybe uh, the, the Dutch people have very, uh, they make categories like, okay, you're a close friend, but you're like an acquaintance, you're a neighbor, that kind of thing. So it's not mixed, but everything is it's very categorical mm. yeah. in that sense. And sometimes I also find it quite uh, complicated. Yeah. yeah. But, it's, but it's interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and of course, there are exceptions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, but it, I think it's it, it's true that um, how do you say? It, I think Dutch people they decide at some point that you're a friend and then you're in. Yeah. And but it takes a very long yes. time until you uh, you get there. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But there's also another thing that's uh, quite funny when I was growing up. Um, because food is very important in Chinese culture and uh, you always eat together. Mm. Definitely, yeah. yeah. And then I was um, at, at my um, classmate's house uh, and then we were playing and all of a sudden the mother comes and says, it's five o'clock, you have to go now, because mm. we're having dinner. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> So yeah. it's completely foreign. Right? That's completely home. different. Yeah, and I came home and 
and she and I said, oh, mom, I'm hungry. Why didn't you eat? Well, they didn't let me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so yeah. uh, it, you can eat there when you make an appointment. Yeah, 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 it has to be booked. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But with our family, it was always it was, it was supposed to stay because it's offensive to leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Completely... There are these very interesting yeah. things that, Most you know? Differences. Yeah, and a while ago, I was with my friends, and then um, she's Turkish. And um, so, like, yeah, a neighbor came to pick up a package. And then she opened the door because my hands were, like, in clay and things like that. And she was like, yeah, can I, um, like... Can I give you a package? Oh, by the way, uh, my name is Gosa and things like that. Like she was really sweet, and you know, and uh, she was like, okay, I just want my package. Like, and then, and then she was like, are you kidding me? Like, well, what did I do to deserve this? You know, <laughs> what's happening? And then yeah, but it's uh, and then um, half an hour later we leave from the house, and then we come across to another neighbor who's actually um, um, she's from Vietnam. But the thing is, um, I think, of course, by the time that she's been living here for like ever, <laughs> that um, she also changed into this Dutch cultural forms, of course. We don't really, because she also has a Dutch partner and, you know. And then I was just talking to her and my friend was like smiling and saying hi and she completely ignored her. <laughs> like, like, just, you know, like for our culture, it's like a no-go, yeah. like never, ever. And then she was like, are you kidding me? Like, am I invisible? What's happening? Like, and, and I was like, you never noticed this before? Like, is this the first time? And she's like, yeah. <laughs> like, I never noticed. It never happened to me, like, twice in a row at least. And I always thought it's a coincidental thing. And I was like, no, welcome to the Dutch culture. <laughs> and then, like, half an hour later, we, <coughs> we came across to, like, a... Um, um, uh, her her la landlord and then it's the same happening to me but the other way around you know like she was completely ignoring the, that I exist <laughs> and then she was like I know what you mean <laughs> you are right all along <laughs> yeah so that was very really interesting but it's just it yeah so but the thing is what can you do about this that's the question because every culture has this. It's the same with the Chinese culture, you know. Like um, some a actions that I would see and think, okay, this is very interesting and different for me. So can you can you give an example? Oh yeah. <laughs> Here, comes. Here comes the monkey out of the sleeves. <laughs> no, but I mean not the not the community here. As I said, like I'm not that familiar with the, the Chinese community here. But when I went to China, like. <laughs> <laughs> like the, you know, the, the gap in the kids' pants. The gap in their kids Do you know it? It's like a, so they have this, I've never seen it anywhere else in the world. Oh, I think where you're going, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, so they have this thing and then they just, you know, when the kid needs to pee or they anything, it, yeah. yeah, they just like squat and then do it. <laughs> like, for me that was like, what, what, what was that? What's <laughs> happening? <laughs> it's like being very practical. Yeah, yeah. it's like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like next to me. Cool. <laughs> it's a complete culture shock for me. I think like, uh, yeah. <laughs> and the public toilet in the China, for instance, that's oh, also yeah. like a complete shock to me. Like I was like, <laughs> what's happening? Like, like these type of things. And um, I think yeah, that's that's like the uh, most. And I remember I, I have this amazing example that it's also a miscommunication. Mm. So uh, I, the first day I was in China, uh, I went to this very authentic Chinese restaurant that like no tourist would go, and um, because I didn't want to go to somewhere touristy, obviously. And um, I'm sitting there, and it was like right after the flight, you know, like I'm super tired and uh, jet lagged, and just sitting there. And then I asked, like, "Do you have a wet tissue?" Like, and then. He, he didn't quite understand me, like the waiter couldn't, couldn't really understand me. And then I said, like, like, do you have like a wet tissue? Like, uh, like I was trying to explain it the way, or like a toilet. And he was like, nothing. And then I was like, okay, like, like tissue to, at least to wipe my hands. And he actually misunderstood me, thinking that I asked him to clean his hands. <laughs> because I... <laughs> So he, went, oh dear. he went so mad. He was like shouting, and then he took his 
like my he took my napkin and then he did this to himself like and then he just like twirled it and put it in front of me and then I was like oh dear but I felt so bad because I, because it was probably my mistake that I you know didn't understand how he would react to the situation but he didn't understand what you were saying exactly so it's like both ways but still I mean like in the <coughs> yeah I think in our culture, even if a customer says something silly to you, you wouldn't go all out on it. Oh yeah, you would. No. Oh yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. What you would. <laughs> you think too highly of the Dutch culture when it comes to being uh, polite. <laughs> have, you, have you been in Amsterdam? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh yeah, you would. <laughs> like a while ago... Maybe I, I go to better restaurants. Yeah, I, a while ago I was in this cafe and then there was this lady with like... Uh, she was always carrying like in a tray like three cappuccinos and like four cappuccinos whatever and then she came to our table and we were three people and I said like, uh, like can we get three cappuccinos and she went and she came back with two and I said oh uh, we only also had one more and she's like yeah I only have two hands <laughs> yeah that, that, it is it is it is so common here as well so anyhow <laughs> Back to the point. So I think. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I th I think it's just um, the the way people communicate is much different, and that's that's sometimes sometimes for me like very different as well. Yeah. That's that's the only thing that uh, really comes to my mind. Like, you know, people say that I sometimes speak very angry with the people, like with my friends in Turkish. It just sounds angry because of the, the way. We, it's the same, like, I think I see this also, like, a similar thing in the Chinese culture that that's very interesting. They're not angry at all, but they see they seem and <laughs> sound angry yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Like, oh, what are you doing? Like, no, I love you, okay? <laughs> 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 <But> like, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a thing that Chinese never say. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've heard about it's, that, yeah. Uh, it's a very... Um, Communication is not the strongest, uh, strongest thing. Um, I, I didn't really grow up with parents who were very communicative or, oh, give me a hug. No, there were no hugs. Mm. There was no hugs. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's also what I experienced when I was living. Like there was a very large distance between the parents yeah, and yeah, the kids. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like a military. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah sure. But the only way to communicate was through food. <laughs> exactly. Food tells stories. Uh, yeah. Food uh, you know, shows that a mother loves a child by giving them the biggest uh, like chicken leg. Um, mm. it's, just, it's, it's food. Yeah. No, I understand. I totally understand. Yeah. So, um, how do you feel about these Chinese takeaway restaurants? Because I think. In essence, they are misrepresenting the Chinese culture. But, on the other hand, uh, I've come to realize that um, these restaurants have become a symbol of the place that the Chinese have um, acquired within uh, Dutch, uh, Dutch society. Because the Chinese have actually contributed quite a lot to, to the society. They introduced the phenomenon of eating out, uh, mm -hmm. going out. To, mm. to eat in restaurants, the takeaway they introduced, and they introduced being open on a Sunday. Yeah. Very, you know, very religious. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Sunday, everything is closed, but the Chinese are like, open the doors. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we wanna, we gotta make money. <laughs> like, exactly. it's the same in Turkey, so. <laughs> so, you know, so, so, uh, on the list, like, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Unconsciously, uh, I think the Chinese have done a very, very good job in, in integrating in that sense because the Chinese restaurants have, have actually become part of the Dutch culture. Of course. Mm. So that's why they re they built a Chinese restaurant in the National Museum in Arnhem. Yeah. So it's, it's part of the mm. Dutch wow. culture. Wow. I didn't so, know that. Uh, yeah, it's, it basically symbolizes the, the, the really strong brand right, in the Chinese restaurants. Yeah. I think it's, uh, it's going to be a shame if they really do dis disappear because it's simple. Yeah. I'm afraid that it will disappear. Yeah, yeah. but th I think that, as I said, like we don't really have a Chinese community. Mm. So what I see is that, you know, okay, Roy is an exception because he actually have been to China. But when I still talk to a lot of people here, they know much more about the, cu the cuisine mm. than I would mm. because 
you know, we have Chinese restaurants, but they are all run by Turkish people, you know, maybe there's like one Chinese chef or, yeah, one or two Chinese people like operating it or something, but that's overall like, it's not authentic at all. It's just really almost Americanized, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. and um, at, least, at least here, you know, you go to supermarket and there's an endless options of ingredients you can find to make a, a nice proper Chinese dish and then people actually know what they mean and what they are. For me, I go to the supermarket and I would, I would look at them and I was like, I don't know where I would start with. And then Roy, like, he just would be able to cook this amazing Chinese meals just because he has been eating them forever here. Like, it's just almost like a part of Dutch, like, cuisine that people eat, like, Chinese, Indonesian food, you know, Surinamese, Turkish. But, like, especially with the Asian cultures overall, they, they, they cook amazing food here. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think it is how I see it. Yeah, in that sense, uh, Rotterdam is so much better than in Amsterdam, I must uh, admit. Because in Amsterdam, it's, uh, it's more like those hipster, mm. really expensive, yeah. expensive you know, places. And, yeah. Mm. But the, the, the diversity of food here in Rotterdam is amazing. Mm. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, I've also been to a very different, uh, you know, it always felt different when, when I went to these couple of different restaurants, like which are all Chinese eventually, but of course it's just not all Chinese, that's the thing. That's a, that's a beautiful thing about it, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's because they are very various, you know, you cannot find one dish in the other one sometimes. Mm. And, yeah. yeah. Do we need to go? Yeah, we should move on to some. Uh, you can stay as long. We should as give other people the opportunity to talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> you can stay, but if you go, you, uh, yeah, yeah, I find it quite exciting. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so, what is your favorite Chinese food? Ooh, I would have to say the Peking duck. Oh. Yeah, so if it's done well, that's my favorite. Uh, I read the article I feel so bad about. That uh, I don't eat dog. I read the article about. Um, no duck.